I get righteously indignant when I hear the devil messing with God's people. Woo, come on. I get righteously indignant. Amen. Shane, can you do this? Praise the Lord. I get righteously, violently angry at the devil when he tries to mess with God's people. Guess what? He is defeated. He is defeated. Amen. He's a defeated liar. And we don't give him any place in our bodies. We don't give him any place in our thoughts. Amen. Say, I don't give any place to the devil. Come on, just make that choice right now. I don't give him any place. No place in my thoughts. No place in my body. Hallelujah. Declare that in faith. No place in my thoughts. No place in my body. I declare healing and wholeness in Jesus name what does healing mean it means disease stops but what's wholeness it means restoration back into the original state amen we learned about that with the beggars that cried out for mercy and Jesus healed them that means the disease no longer continued in their body but only one of them was restored back to wholeness to completion who was that the worshiper the one that was thankful, the one that thanked him. Just lift your hands, Father, we are thankful today. We are thankful today. God, we worship you. You're the great, mighty God. Nothing is impossible. Nothing's too difficult for you, God. So we worship you, and we lay hold to what's ours by faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You said we'll have whatsoever we say. So we say we're healed, and we're whole, and we're blessed, and we're supplied for. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Say this. I'm the head. I am not the tail. I'm above only. Come on. Say it like you mean it. I'm above only not beneath say this I'm blessed coming in and I'm blessed going out hallelujah the windows of heaven are open and they're pouring out a blessing on me so great I can't even contain I got so much I just got to give it away praise the Lord amen the blessing of the Lord say the blessing of the Lord is on my life say I have the favor of God it surrounds me like a shield what happens when you walk in favor people don't know why they just want to do nice things for you we went to get a couple smoothies the other day and one employee said i'm giving you a discount praise god i'll take it then we went to get a sandwich and a drink just down from there at mcallister's and we paid for the sandwich and, and angelina's like oh i forgot to order my drink the lady said it's on the house favor favor amen favor in the little things and in the big things favor 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 in all things declare that right now in this atmosphere i declare favor on my life for i'm a worshiper Hallelujah. Pastor has shared Psalm 5, 11 and 12 many times in this, in this church because it's a key to walking in the favor of God. It says, let all those who put their trust in you rejoice. That's what we did this morning. We rejoiced. I put my trust in him, so I rejoice. Let them ever sing. Let them ever shout for joy. Come on, I think you need to stand and give a shout to the Lord. Come on, stand up on your feet. Rejoice. Give a shout unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name, Father. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let them ever sing and shout for joy. Remain standing. It says, let them ever sing and shout for joy. For you defend them. Woo! Say, he's my defender. And let all those who put their trust in you bless you. Amen. Bless your holy name and be joyful in you. For you, oh Lord, will bless the righteous with favor. You will surround him like a shield. Just declare that I've got favor on my life. I've got favor on my family. I've got favor in my business. I've got favor in this church. Hallelujah. Well, this church has favor. Amen. This school has favor. We declare great favor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Let's just say it. Great favor is on my life. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody. I got to tell you something. I got great favor in my life. People just want to bless me. People just want to do nice things for me. That officer said, oh, no, no I'm not going to give you a ticket. <laughs> Praise the Lord. No, that's, you don't use that as a license to do wrong. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for your favor, Father. We bless you. We bless you. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. We thank you for the healing anointing that's flowing in this place today. And we thank you, Father, that every person that's here today will receive that divine touch, that divine flow in their body. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Don't let that miracle pass you by. 
Amen. You may be seated, but I want you to keep the switch of faith turned on. What does that mean? You stay in that attitude. Keep those spirit antennas up. If the Holy Spirit tells you to do something or declare something or rejoice or take off running, you listen to him. Amen. He's looking for people that will act on his word. Praise the Lord. Amen. Say, I'm a doer of the word of God. I do what God says. I do what his word says. Amen. That's my standard by which I live. Look what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Time to take a test this morning. Y'all haven't had a test in a little while, have you? 2 Corinthians 13, 5. It's not summertime yet. You're still in school. Amen. Sometimes there's tests during school days. 2 Corinthians 13, 5. I like this in the Amplified. It says, examine and test and evaluate your own selves to see whether you are holding to your faith. Are you holding on to your faith? And are you showing the proper fruit of it? Test and prove yourselves. Do you not realize and know that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless you're disapproved on trial and rejected. Paul's saying, if you are a child of God, you are a follower of God. You are one that has submitted your life to him and he is your Lord. He said, you need to examine and look to see, am I in faith right now? concerning the situations in my life. When you're confronted with the challenge, you can either step into faith or you can step out of faith. And sometimes people step out of faith and think they're in faith. Why do we know this? Because he's saying you need to examine yourself. Some of you think you're in faith and you're not in faith. And so he said you need to test it. And one of the ways you test is you look to see is there fruit of it. Now you know when you fight the fight of faith, you hold that good confession. You stay steady. You stay believing God's word. And maybe the manifestation doesn't come immediately, but it will come. Amen. It will come in time. So what we want to do is examine are we really believing or are we just wishing or just hoping? There's a big difference between Bible faith and Bible wishing. You're wishing for something to happen. You might wish for things, but are you in faith believing? Because where is faith? It's not of the mind. Faith is not knowledge. Faith is not intellectual or mental or logical. It's not part of reasoning. Where's faith of? It's of the heart. This is where faith lives in your heart, not necessarily in your head, because your head's going to say all kinds of crazy stuff. Your, your head's constantly going to be questioning your faith. But right here, you get it solid. Right here, you get it settled. Amen. Praise the Lord. Faith is of the heart. Say that faith is of the heart. So when you're confronted with a challenge or an opportunity to exercise your faith or not, the first thing you need to do is listen to your heart, not your head. You want to go to your heart first because I promise your head's going to start talking to you. And you want to shut down the voice of your head and listen to the voice of what's in your heart. Check your heart to see, am I persuaded or am I pretending? Because sometimes people delude themselves in thinking they're in faith when they're truly not. And if you talk to them long enough, you'll see that they're not in faith. And you can, if you'll be honest about it, you, you can say, yeah, there's times I really wasn't in faith. I was saying all the right words and hoping I was, but there really wasn't faith there. Why? Because when you're in faith, you know. There's a confidence, there's a boldness, there's a, a, a fierceness that you're going to lay hold of that and you're going to see the manifestation and you're not giving up till it, till it comes and you don't waver and there's just a tenacity about you. You know when you're in faith, Amen. So don't be too quick to say you're believing until you stopped and you listen on the inside and you get into that place of faith. Now we looked at Romans 10, 17 that says faith comes by how? By hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's why we've been doing healing school since 2003, because we want to just continually be hearing the word. And this is just one time a week. You have to be doing this more than just once. You wouldn't just eat on Sunday morning, one meal, and then not eat again until the next Sunday, right? Unless you're called to a fast. So you have to stay in that continual flow of hearing the word, listening to the word, keeping your faith strong in the areas, especially the areas where you're being tested. Pastor often says this, if somebody's got a physical ailment in their body and they spent all their time studying the Antichrist, they're putting their attention in the wrong place. It's good to know about the end times and to have an understanding so that you say, okay, I know what's coming. But if you've got a need right now, maybe your finances are out of order. You want to be focusing on studying that so that your faith can be built in that area. And, and faith doesn't just come just hearing words. It comes from hearing the anointed word of God. 
Just because your eyes go across the words in this doesn't mean that faith is going to come. You have to be have eyes and a heart and ear that says, I'm going to hear from God. God's going to speak to me and I'm going to get my answer. Because some people just read this just to say, I read my Bible today. They don't come to it with the expectation of I'm going to get answers from God that's going to change my life and change my situation. So it says faith comes by hearing and hearing. And I truly believe when Paul was writing this, what he's saying is sometimes the first time you hear something, you're like, oh, okay. But then when you hear it again, it's like, oh, okay. Something happens when you stay under that flow of hearing and hearing the word of God. It's almost as if the first time you hear it, it's the logos, it's the written. And then as you continue to hear, it comes alive and becomes the rhema word of God, the living word of God. Amen. You might wish for it, but you have to be honest when it's not there, especially concerning other people. Sometimes we need to find out what other people's will is in a situation. There's been times where we've had people contact us to go pray for people, and we go there, and people don't want prayer. The family was hoping they'd be open to it. It's a good thing to to give it a chance if somebody would be open, but sometimes if people aren't open, the door is closed there unless there's a divine miracle that flows, and that's as the Spirit wills. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that there's the gift of miracles. That is just, God just moves and just divinely imparts a miracle, but if not, you can always get healing through faith, but faith, sometimes you have to have that person's cooperation to be able to release your faith for them, amen? So we want to ask ourselves today, you want to do an inventory on your own life, the things that you are facing right now, the challenges that you have, the things that you're believing for, and you need to ask yourself, am I truly in faith concerning this situation? And if not, why not? Sometimes it's because of a lack of preparation. Maybe you haven't been feeding on the word. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. If you haven't been staying in that perpetual flow, am I the only one? Or some of you had times where you just get so busy and circumstances come and all of a sudden you think, man, I haven't read my Bible in a few days or a week or some of you maybe a month or longer. But we shake off the dust every Sunday, so you shouldn't have more than a week of dust, right, Sharon? Amen. If you'll just be honest about it and say, I have not given God's word first place. And so then when you go to release your faith, you don't have it actively alive in your heart. So sometimes it's a lack of preparation. Sometimes it's a sin. Think of Samson. Samson was flowing with the power of God and he fell into sin and thought he would still have the power of God manifested in his life. And it cost him his life. And so we want to be looking. We take a very serious look at our lives to see if there's any areas of sin. Now, some are obvious. You know, if you rob a bank or you, you know, steal something from your neighbor or, you know, set a building on fire, some kind of crazy sin. Those are obvious. But there are some times where we open the door to sin where it's so subtle we don't even realize it. When we're in doubt, in unbelief, when we're engaging in a line of thinking that does not please the Lord. Those are all open doors to the enemy. We want to keep those shut. Amen. Praise the Lord. How about disobedience? You can ask Jonah how much it cost him when he was disobeying God. And so God says, you go to Nineveh and you share the gospel and these people are going to turn from their sin. And he said, I'm going the other way. I'm not going to Nineveh. Amen. And so because of his disobedience, he knew he wasn't following the plan of God. When all, th- all the things started coming against him, he's like, oh man, I know what I did wrong. And when you know you've disobeyed, you got to repent of that and then do what? Turn and do the direction you're supposed to be in. And then your faith will be alive. Um, How about not finding out God's will concerning the situation? Why is it I can't get my faith to connect? Well, maybe I'm going in a direction that's not God. And so when I try to get faith to flow for praying for that situation, I can't connect because that's not God. Because if it is the will of God, your faith is going to connect. When you're connecting with God's will and God's plan, then your faith will be active. Maybe you're pursuing a job or you're planning on a trip or you're pursuing a relationship and that's not God's will and you're praying about it and you just can't get connected. You have to stop and ask yourself, what, what's going on? Why can't I get connected? Is there something I'm not seeing? And guess what? The Lord will show you if you ask him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we don't want to just generically say, I'm believing. I'm believing God for this. We want to really stop and think, am I truly believing? Because that's a powerful thing to release from your mouth. I'm believing God for this situation or this circumstance or this change. You want to make sure that it's coming from that place of faith. Uh, You also want to watch people just saying, well, I'm standing on the word. Well, there's a lot of scriptures in this word. Which one are you standing on? Which one is alive and burning in your heart? And that's the one that that you're using to release your faith with. Don't just be in the habit of saying that because what happens is you hurt your faith. 
I love a teaching that Pastor Keith Moore did. That's where this came from. He said, we hurt our faith when you try to just tell people, well, I'm believing God for you to get this house. Well, I'm believing God for you to get this job. I'm believing God for you to get this spouse. I'm believing for this. I'm believing for this. And none of those things have you felt a witness in your heart from the Lord. And so you just keep putting it out there and they're like, well, I didn't get the job. Well, I didn't get the house. Well, he left me. All these things come. Then it hurts your faith because you're like, well, I prayed and none of these things happen. Well, sometimes it's because we're not listening on the inside to see, do I get a quickening from the spirit for this? Amen. Every day you need to hear from God for every situation. Every day, every day. Maybe you've always done something every single day in routine, but one day you wake up and you just feel something. You need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit concerning that. I remember Angelina brought me a field trip slip recently, and she said, Mom, my, cl- my school is going on a field trip, and I looked at it, and I gave the details to her dad, and, and we signed it off and gave it to her and said, okay, you can go on this trip. And a few days later, she brought another field trip for him for a different field trip. And when she set that in front of me, my heart was like, I don't know. And she's, Mom, sign it. I need to take it to school. I said, I'm not ready to sign it yet. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, I need to get the green light right here on the inside to know it's okay for you to do this. She said, mom. And I said, Angelina, the Holy Spirit knows things we don't know. I just need to make sure that this is right in my heart with the Lord. And so I gave it a couple days and I said, Lord, is this you? Is there something going on? You know, is it fear in my heart? You know, what is it? Um, and I just took it to the Lord for a few days. And then one, just one day I just felt the release. Okay, go ahead and sign it and send it in. I, I think he was just testing me because she went on the trip and had a great time. But we don't just rotely do things without stopping and thinking, is this okay with God? In every decision, we have to stop and ask ourselves, is God okay with this for me to do this? Maybe he tells you to go to work a totally different route than you usually do. Maybe it's going to be a little bit longer, a little bit inconvenient, but he knows what we don't know, and he sees what we can't see. And walking by faith is, God, what are you speaking to me right now concerning this situation? Amen. It's a daily, minute by minute, second by second, dependency on him to lead us. Amen. So the more word that's in you, the quicker you recognize God speaking to you. The more time I spend in this word and I, oh, I learned this and oh, I learned, oh, I saw another side of God and oh man, I'm going to add this to my faith. You just keep adding more and more, the quicker you hear his voice and you discern when it's him because the devil is a deceiver and he's a liar and he deceives people. You know, he's, 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 he appears to be something that he's really not. You know, he comes as like an angel of light and he'll come and he'll say things. And if you don't have that spiritual discernment, you'll hear him give you a plan and you might mistake that for the voice of God. And you have to be discerning to know when you're hearing something, especially something major like job change, moving, marriages, when to have children, major things you need to stop. And I I do it in the little. Pastor and I do it in everything. Why? We just want to stay on the right mark. Amen? And so the more words you get in here, the quicker you recognize them and you know whether it's God or not. And the more that he can bring to your remembrance. When you're in a challenging time, that's very difficult to get your Bible out and start looking up scriptures depending on what the situation is. Maybe you're on the way to the hospital and there's an emergency going on. It's the word that you've stored up in here that the Holy Spirit will bring to you that will give you the victory. Amen? Praise the Lord. So there's a word in season that the Holy Spirit will quicken to you. And when you get that word from him, faith comes. Praise the Lord. I was driving here just yesterday. And as I was driving, I was feeling some symptoms coming in my body. And I heard on the inside of me two phrases. I have a healer. Healing belongs to me. That was in my spirit. So I I heard it in my spirit, but I'm driving and I'm just kind of engaged in talking to the kids and thinking. And I heard it come again. I have a healer and healing belongs to me. And I went, oh, that's good. I kind of thought that in my head. Yeah, that's good. And all of a sudden I heard a little stronger. I have a healer and healing belongs to me. And I went, that's you, Holy Spirit. You're talking to me. And so with boldness, while I'm driving, I might have even startled the kids. I said, I have a healer and healing belongs to me. And I kept saying it over and over. And I just kept feeling the anointing of God just flowing through me. Amen. And those symptoms had to go. Amen. By the time I got here, I was feeling great. What is that? Minute by minute, second by second. What is he speaking to me? And as soon as he speaks, I act on it because that's where my faith is. Faith comes. Praise the Lord. That's how God operates. Some people will will make you think that faith is a movement or faith is a group. That's a faith group, but we're not in that group. Or that faith is a doctrine. But that's not true. Faith is the way by which God operates. It's our life. Faith is our lifestyle. It's how he operates and it's how he told us to operate. And it's the way that we obtain 
everything from God that we need is through faith. Amen? It's how God functions and it's how we live. So the faith that you have now is so precious. The Bible says it's like precious, more precious than gold. It's so valuable. Why? Because not a lot of people are operating in it. A lot of people are just letting circumstances come and they're saying, God's will be done. And they're not engaging and releasing their faith and listening on the inside for the voice of the Holy Spirit so they know how to respond in situations. And the faith that you have now, it can grow. We talked about how God gives everybody a measure of faith. You have the God kind of faith on the inside of you. Just say that. I've got God's faith. Mark eleven twenty two. it says, have faith in God. Have the faith of God. I have God's faith. And it's a measure of his very own faith. The faith that created this world lives inside of me. Same exact faith. And so when I exercise and I use that, I have results from it because God's faith always produces results. Amen. That's the name of this series, Faith That Produces Results. God's faith always produces results. So when I let him speak to me and faith comes and I act on it, I will get great results. Amen. And this faith will keep growing. Your faith can progressively keep growing through your journey with Christ. And guess what? You're taking it with you in the life to come. You will take your faith and you will use it in the life to come. Because we don't just go to heaven and just float on wings and just sing for millennials. We have things that we will do in the, in the life to come. The Bible teaches us that. And how faithful you are in your faith walk here determines what you do in heaven. And I want to be faithful. I want to get to heaven and God say, okay, we got some good stuff you're going to do here in heaven too. Amen. So we want to be deliberate and we want to be consistent and we want to be serious about our faith walk. Um, we had a, a person that came to us and said, I, I'm changing jobs and it's a major change in my life. We'd like to share with you about it and see if you have a piece about it because I trust you as, as my pastor. Pastor wasn't available. So I talked to this person first and the whole time they're talking to me, I just had peace right here. Now, in my head, I was like, oh, man, I don't want that person to change jobs because that's going to impact some things that I know, uh, you know, it's going to be a little difficult to not have this person in this position. But in my heart, I got a green light. And so I said, I'm going to see what pastor says. So that we brought pastor in. Pastor met with this person. He had a green light. And we said, go with the blessing of the Lord. Why? Because faith was said, yes. Amen. You have to wait for those green lights. And so there's two things when you're examining to see if you're in faith or not. Two things you want to look at. First of all, you want to be sure that you're not pretending you heard from God when you haven't. And we know that because we've had some people say, oh, we want to tell you God spoke to us. And God told us to do this, this, and this. Now, they never asked us what we felt about it. And Pastor and I will not add our our comments about it if you're not asking because sometimes people aren't coming to ask they're just coming to tell how many of you know there's a difference between asking and telling I want to come to you and I want to ask you if you feel this is a good decision am I making a good choice and we don't we don't mean you have to come for us for every little thing but when it's like something major and you just want to be sure you're following the plan of God so this person comes to us and shares that with us and we have a witness but sometimes people haven't heard from God and they'll say oh God told me to go do this and in our hearts we're knowing that's not God that's not bearing witness in our heart. And so off they go, and then they get themselves into a mess. We've seen people that now they're not in the ministry. They were in the ministry. Now they're not in the ministry. Some of them are not even serving the Lord anymore. Some of them have walked away from the faith because they got out of it. They were pretending like they heard from God when they really didn't. God didn't say anything, and they try to convince you. So you want to listen on this in the inside when somebody's coming to you and sharing something with you. And as they're speaking to you, maybe you're not sure whether you can add your faith. Get a little more information. Say, tell me a little bit about what you're planning to do. And as they're talking, listen on the inside. And see if you get a quickening from the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't go and ask for counsel, you're not giving place to spiritual leadership. You're going to miss the wisdom and the anointing and the help that God gives them. You know, there are people that I look to and they've not been saved as long as I have. They've been saved a shorter time, but because of the anointing on their life, because God's called them and put a call on their life, there's an anointing that's in them that I can glean from. And you can glean from people that have an anointing because God is gracing them with wisdom that you need. And we have to be humble to say, I want to share this with you. Tell me what you feel in your heart about this. It's good to do that. So God gives godly headship answers and wisdom and instruction because of their experience and their position with God. So when you go to somebody, watch how you approach them because you want to keep yourself open. Keep the door open. Keep your attitude open. When you come in and you've made up your mind and you're just telling, you can miss some tremendous wisdom. You want to make sure you're coming seeking and asking. 
I remember uh, one person came to us, another person after this one that was considering a job change, another major change in their life. And as soon as that person started speaking to me, I had a, a grieving in my heart. And I shared it with pastor and he said, bring that person in. And that person came in and was sharing and they were absolutely convinced they'd heard from God. They were absolutely certain. And so pastor had a grieving in his heart also and he began to share some wisdom and the person just sat there and bawled on his couch and said, I didn't know. I really thought I heard from God. And it scared this person because they thought I almost made a huge major life change thinking I was hearing from God and I wasn't. And this person submitted themselves and was humble and said, I'm gonna heed what God is saying to you. And they've stayed right on track. Praise the Lord. Never missed a beat. Amen. It's okay to say, I missed it. Have anybody ever missed it before? You thought you were hearing from God and you step out and you're like, well, it obviously wasn't God because it didn't turn out right. And a good thing is to go back and, and inventory that. Did I get godly counsel or did I listen on the inside? Because the Lord is always speaking. Amen. But we don't listen to the enemy. The enemy will whisper something in your ear that you think is him. You think it's God and it's a counterfeit. He feeds the wrong thoughts to our minds and we need the Holy Spirit and we need the word and we need the gifts that God God's given to the body to help us discern truth and lies. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at John chapter two. We can look at the example of Jesus and there's some powerful things we can see about releasing our faith in the right timing. In John chapter two, verse one, it says on the third day, there was a wedding in the in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Isn't that like totally cool? Wouldn't it be totally cool to have Jesus and all the disciples at your wedding? I'm mean, like, this person is really blessed. They had the Savior at their wedding. Amen. So verse 3, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Now, he's not being disrespectful because Jesus was very respectful. But what he was saying is he was waiting for the right timing. He had not yet stepped into his, his, his ministry of miracles up to this point, and he was waiting on the right timing. And so what is he saying? If it's not my right timing, and if I'm not being led by God, this does not concern me. I'm not to get involved with this. And there are times when you get brought into a situation, and in your heart you're feeling, this is not God. It's not my place to get involved with this. You have to be honest enough to say that. And Jesus said, this isn't my place. This isn't my timing. But he obviously listened on the inside and God spoke to him because in verse five, this is so powerful. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says, do it. That's so powerful. Whatever he says, do it. That's what faith is. What's God saying? I'm going to do it. Amen. When you hear God say something, you just do it because the moment you act on it, that's where power comes. And so there were six water pots according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons. And verse seven, Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted that the water was turned into wine, he didn't know where it came from. But the servants who drew the water, what did it say? The servants who drew the water. The servants drew out water. Wait a minute. When he drank it, it was wine. When did it become wine? When they acted on the word of Jesus and they did what they could do. They carried the water pots. They dipped it out, still water, but they took it to the man and handed it to him. When their hand released it, the power of God changed that water to wine. When God speaks to you, you step out and do what he tells you to do as much as you can. And the moment you do that, you will meet the healing miracle power of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost on that one. Praise the Lord. Some of you are waiting and waiting and waiting. And God's saying, move, act, do something. Do what he says. Those that drew out the water knew where this water had come from. And he said to them, well, every good man sets out the good one at the beginning. And then when the Drunk, when the guests have become drunk, then they bring out the inferior wine, but you saved the good until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed in him. They learned a valuable lesson that day that when Jesus said something, you act on it immediately and you do it. Amen. Do exactly what he says. So we want to be sure that we're not pretending and deluding ourselves that we heard from God when we haven't. Second thing we want to do when we inventory ourselves is when you have heard from God, obey. Because when you don't obey, then that's what James calls dead faith. Look over in James chapter 2. 
Hallelujah. Say, I've got real living faith. Come on, say it like you mean. I have genuine faith. James chapter 2, verse 14 says, What is it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith, but he does not have works? Or we could say corresponding actions. Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says, depart, be in peace, be warm, be filled, but you don't give them the things they need for their body, what does it profit? Thus, faith by itself does not have works. The faith that does not have works is dead. What's he saying here? There has to be corresponding action. That's why when pastor says, there's a healing anointing here. Come on, just lift your hands and worship the Lord and receive your healing. Or when God's telling us in worship this morning, man, let's just let out a shout. Come on, let's rejoice. When you do that, when you act on that, you put yourself in a position to receive the healing power of God. Amen? We must act on what God directs. Sometimes he'll tell you to declare. He'll tell you to shout. He'll tell you to sing. He'll tell you to worship. He'll tell you to give. He'll tell you to repent. He'll tell you to correct a wrong. If you will do it immediately when he tells you, you're putting yourself in that position of faith. Now, if you look at the account of the man with the withered hand, there's several places in the Bible that talks about the man with the withered hand. Matthew 12, 9 is one of them. Jesus sees this man with a withered hand, and it's on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees just get so mad when he heals on the Sabbath. So they're waiting to see if he's going to heal. And they even question him, are you going to do this? And he said, if you had an ox that fell into a hole, wouldn't you take it out on the Sabbath? Wouldn't you make sure that your ox that's struggling comes out and is free? Well, yes, I'm going to heal. This man is struggling. I'm going to free him on the Sabbath. And he, brought, and he said, stretch out your hand. And so that man, his hand was withered. And it says that he stretched it out. He'd never been able to do that before, but he, he did what he could do. He started to lift it up, and it said, and he, he stretched out that hand, and it was healed. What does that mean? He did as far as he could go on his own, and God saw his faith, and the healing power of God hit that hand, and his fingers were loosed, and his hand was healed. Amen? God's just looking for you to act on what he's speaking to your heart. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. How the Israelites cross the Red Sea, but the Egyptians drowned, because God told him, you step out, step out. And they stepped out, and right as they put that foot where that water was the waters parted amen sometimes it looks like as you're stepping out this is not going to work what's going on but God says just do it just do it just step out and believe me that's what faith is when Jesus says go to the river and wash yourself the blind man when Jesus says get up your mat and walk the man that had been crippled and never done it they just acted on that word and strength came to his legs strength came to his eyes amen say move act do what he says whatever he says do it Amen. So when you're really in faith, you will hear from him and you will use that kind of faith. You'll get the God kind of faith on the inside of you. You'll hear it. You'll listen. You'll act on it and declare what God says. Amen. Uh, last year I was teaching in the Bible school on covenant and I love teaching on covenant because it gives me an understanding and it helps me to be reminded of the relationship I have with God, that he entered into covenant with me through Jesus and that I have benefits and blessings because I'm a child of God. And we had just a wonderful time in that class and we were coming up to the final class. Class was on Tuesday. Monday, I get up. I take the kids to school. Started feeling a little tired, so I laid down just for a few minutes and fell, actually fell back asleep. I, that's why I usually don't lay back down because I'll fall back asleep. But I had fallen back asleep, and so um, I woke up, and my eyes opened up. I thought, what happened to me? Every single part of my entire body was aching. I remember laying there going, even my eyelids hurt. Ugh everything 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 aching and I was shivering I was freezing cold but I was sweating and I just felt so horrible and I thought what happened and so I thought what is going on in my body and the first thing I did is I said Holy Spirit what do we do what do we do Holy Spirit and I laid there just for a minute and he told me that I need to listen to Trina Hankins testimony on healing God healed her of an inoperable brain tumor so I brought my phone over and I looked and punched it in and listened to it and then he led me to listen to some healing that's uh, healing songs pastor Keith Moore has it on his website free it's called healing in his um, healing in his wings and they're all faith songs about healing and so I listened to that and then it led me to listen to a teaching by pastor Keith Moore on healing and after I'd heard Trina and I'd listened to those songs and I listened to that teaching faith rose up in my heart and from that place of faith I declared healing over my body I command the spirit of infirmity to take his hands off my body I called myself whole and I felt something lift off me I felt something go 
And as soon as I did, I went, oh, that feels good. All the pain left instantly. Amen. Temperature brought right back down to level. And, and, and I got right up out of bed. So I'm going to go eat some to eat. Praise the Lord. So I said, I had the flu for about two and a half hours last year. Amen. As long as it took me to do that. But why didn't I immediately start to declare healing as soon as those symptoms came? Because I knew I wasn't in a place of faith where I was engaged and I was ready to do it. I had to wait till I'd spent just a little time just building, stirring up that faith on the inside. And then there was result. Amen. Hallelujah.